what's going on guys yesterday i recorded about a 20 minute video opening some mail it's gonna do a little mailbag video an unboxing mail day video uh which if you guys enjoy i'll do more frequently but uh the problem was that the microphone from the overhead camera and the microphone that i use here were both on so there's a considerable amount of echo uh <laughs> I tried for about three hours to remove the echo, and after that I decided it was not worth it. And probably won't upload that one unless you guys really want me to. However, got some more mail, so I figured we could do it again. Got some mail here. These are all magic cards. It was It's mail day. Um, you know, actually, truth be told, a lot of days are mail day because I do tend to order a good amount of magic cards, but I figured we'd open them here, and you guys can see what I'm picking up and why, and then we can talk about magic cards. Maybe you'll enjoy that. This is from The Gaming Warehouse, and it looks like they have taped the, the card inside of the envelope, which is one of my pet peeves. It's probably for a good reason. I personally don't understand it, but, yep, it was taped in there. Okie dokie good times and then we have this guy and that is unfortunate <laughs> this is one of my least favorite things ever so i ordered two of these because i saw them being played in legacy uh these are foils i do not play or use foils so now i have to message the seller and see if they can send me the regular ones they probably won't have them so they'll just refund me and i'll have to rebuy them and now i have these two foils and they'll never see the light of day Anyway, this guy's kind of neat. It's a, it's a Mardu costed uh, legendary creature. It's a 2-2. And it just says Vigilance Haste. It gets plus one, plus one for each experience counter you have. And then you can just tap it to deal one damage to a creature you don't control. When that creature dies, you get an experience counter. So it's a 3-3 three, three, and a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, it's a pretty sweet card for three mana. And it has haste. So it, just like is it static caster, you can activate it the turn it comes into play. But now I'll have to keep these over here and make sure to message about that. Um, <laughs> sometimes sellers are like, wow, I never thought someone would complain about getting a foil version instead of a regular version. Well, two things about that, good sir, is one, I just want the cards that I ordered. If I order regular, it's because I only play with regular versions. I don't like foils. I don't want to have a deck with like 58 regular cards and two foils. That's awkward. And it's not... Uh, it's not comforting when it comes to tournament legality. It makes me feel awkward. Uh, additionally, I don't like the way cards Pringle. This is from High Desert Cards in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And secondly, there's a lot of cards nowadays where the foils are actually less expensive because they're just easier to get. So let's see what we got here. Looks like a good amount Lord of the Rings cards in this bad boy. So we got the Balrog of Moria. Uh, this guy I picked up for my cube specifically. Not to say I will put him in the cube, but I do like having cards for the cube. So I'll pick this guy up. He was like a dollar maybe. And I'll just put it in like a cube sideboard, um, a maybe cards section. And I think I have like 150 now. But it's things like Impulse that are not in the cube right now, but maybe I want to add them one day. Stuff like that. Anyway, this guy's an 8-8 for 7 with Trample and Haste. When it dies, you may exile it. When you do, each opponent exiles them to one creature that player controls. And then you can cycle it for 4, and when you cycle it, you get 2 treasure tokens. So basically, cycling this draw card, make 2 treasures for 4. Pretty decent. It's also a big fat idiot. Another Reprieve. Uh, I got, got some of these yesterday. This card's also amazing. We, I discussed how this is just almost better than Remand in a lot of ways because it doesn't counter the spell. Remand specifically says, specifically says counter target spell. If a spell is countered this way, return it to that player's hand, right? Um, this is specifically not countering a spell. So it gets around things like Cavern of Souls. It gets around creatures that can't be countered. You know, it, it gets around all that stuff. And you still get the same effect as Remand, returning the spell to the hand and drawing a card. Stern Scolding, another solid uncommon from this set. It reminds me a lot of Spell Snare. You know, Stern Scolding, Spell Snare, both alliteration of S's. So 
Very, very good. I picked up five of these as well. And usually I'll pick up, if a card seems good and like it's going to maybe find a home in, in my cube, I'll just pick up a fifth copy. And then three Stone of Eric's. Erich? Erich? Stone of er Eric? Eric? Eric. Eric. So that's pretty good. And then after I open everything, I make sure <laughs> the orders are actually correct. Because I just have a, I have a notepad document with all the orders and everything that was in them. Just so I can be sure. And then there's ones like oh, this, and I'm like, oh, God, I can't really get it open. Got some card crinkling ASMR for you. So this one we got one Battle of Bywater. Another interesting card. I pick up three of these, two for constructed decks and one for the cube. Destroy all creatures of power three or greater. Then create a food token for each creature you control. Three mana, not bad. If you get a bunch of small guys, a bunch of two and one and two power creatures, you just keep all your guys, kill all their guys, make a bunch of food. And then we have an Arwen, Mortal Queen. Another really solid card from this set. When it enters the battlefield, it gets an indestructible counter. So it's a 2-2 two -two with indestructible, but then you can remove the indestructible counter. And then her, Arwen, and another creature each get plus one, plus one, and lifelink. So that's pretty good. And then, oh yeah, there's Stern Scolding. Not bad. I say not bad as if I'm opening packs. I ordered all these, so I don't know why I'm saying not bad. Hey, not bad. Oh, what a good random pack. No, I paid for these. I knew exactly what I was getting. <laughs> I just don't know which, you know, which order I'm going to be opening. So it's kind of like, that's kind of an enjoyable part, right? Like when you make a bunch of orders for like commons and uncommons and specific rares, it's like, it's like you're, you're ordering booster packs. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get in any given pack, but you know, you wanted them all, which is the best part, right? Here's an order of one Coffin Purge and two Goblin Patrols from Urza Saga. These are just for, these are just for pre-modern. I've been really diving into pre-modern. I think it's a super cool idea. Um, so hopefully in the near future I can play some. And me and Katie are moving to San Diego in 2024, around July. So I assume there's probably a pretty good magic scene there. And maybe we can get some pre-modern going. If the format's still alive by then. Oh, this one is also taped in. Okay. Oh, this one might just be... Oh, three Call of the Ring. This card seems very good. And it's seeing a, a, a good amount of play already. So Extended Arts, obviously. Uh, most of the cards I buy, if available, I will get in Borderless Showcase or Extended Art. I always like alternate frames when available. I'm just kind of a customization fan. At the beginning of your upkeep, the ring tempts you. Whenever you choose a creature as your ring bearer, you may pay two if you do draw a card. Like, just a really, really cool way to... Um, like, it's like it's just a cool way to be like a new Phyrexian Arena or a new Underworld Connections or you know, whatever, so, ooh, and then a Delighted Halfling, I liked, I like the Extended Art version better than, oh, let me hide that, better than the Borderless version, I think the Borderless version, it, it looks kind of silly, it just looks really cartoony and goofy, so I, I just went with the Extended Art version, and then There and Back Again, that's a cool one, this card makes a Smog token, which is super cool, that's the dragon, and then when he dies, you create 14 treasure tokens, which is utterly ridiculous. And I can't imagine a situation where you wouldn't just want to try to kill your own smog to make 14 mana. Like, that's wild. But also super flavorful because smog is a dragon that hoards, hoards treasures. So, you know, makes sense. This one has a nice little, little thank you sticker on the back. You're welcome. I just hope I can get into it because, well, we got this guy. Oh, 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 okay, we did it, we did it, so it was awkward for everybody, just so we, just so we're clear,
Oh, and I, I talked about this in the other video too, but I love shipping shields. These are my favorite alternative to top loaders. They're just super cool. Um, it's just a little cardboard sleeve, so it's obviously biodegradable, and, and I don't feel bad about ordering cards and having to throw them out. Two more reprieves. Got to pick up a playset, and also one more for the cube, as, as you may have noticed. This one is from I Don't Know. Looks like North Carolina, though. Some sellers don't put their, like, name or um, company name on the outside. That's fine. I just use my initials when I send stuff. I'm like, FTL. Here you go. So. I mean, it's not... <laughs> and there's no real reason behind it other than just save time. And I don't like writing in pencils. Another Delighted Halfling. This card's so good. I expect it to be two mana. Like, the fact that you can tap it for colorless and, and cast anything with it, or you can tap it for any color mana just to cast on a legendary spell, and the spell can't be counted. Now, legendary spell is a lot. Like, you can cast Planeswalkers, you can cast... Um, what's the other one? Shoot. Like, the legendary sorceries and instants. You can cast creatures, artifacts. Like, there's tons of legendary spells that you can cast with this, and you still get the one colorless mana, so it's not like it can only fit into legendary heavy decks. And it's a 1-2. Come on. I mean, I think the the funny thing is the worst part about this card is that it's a halfling citizen, which are two absolutely useless creature types. But still, I mean, like, that's that's funny. Like, it's funny that that's the worst part about this card. This is from Mindful Games. Oh, that's clever. That's a really clever name. It's Mindful. So, like, two words. But, like... You know, it's a play on mindful. You know, that's that's clever. I'm a fan. Oh, this looks like a this looks like a this looks like a butte. Look at this. Oh yeah. So we got the flowering of the white tree in borderless. Nope, extended art. You can tell extended art and borderless because extended art still has borders here and up here. So the only part that's extended is the art. It's literally just extended. It makes sense. I mean, I got frustrated with this with the nomenclature at the very beginning, but by now it's like second nature. This card seems it's not a strict upgrade to Honor of the Pure. Let's let's be clear, right? Because it's literally harder to cast. If I'm if I'm splashing white and I want to play Honor of the Pure, it's it's easier to cast, but I'm, why would you play Honor of the Pure if you're splashing white? You know, it doesn't make sense to so me. It's a loot. It's basically an upgrade. Flowering of the White Tree. I mean, it's very good. Legendary creatures get plus two, plus one, and have Ward One, but then other creatures get plus one, plus one. So it's just so good. It's so good. It's such a good card. And I got three of these: two for constructed and one for the cube. And the best part about like cards like this is that it's legendary, but it doesn't matter for a cube, right? Like it doesn't matter that it's legendary because it's a cube. It's a one of anyway. So you're never going to draw multiples. And then we got another Arwen. Another extended art. And this is the this is the money boy. Orcish Bowmasters. That's for the thumbnail, I guess. I don't know. And um yeah, this is a borderless card you can see because there's no border. It goes all the way around. The art goes all the way around. This was a card I kind of slept on. Not that I didn't think it was good, but I like, I kind of refused to process how good it was. I just kind of like, I thought it was good, but I was like, I don't know, it's fine. Like, it, I didn't really evaluate it. I didn't take the time to mentally evaluate and figure out how good it was. And it's very, very good. Like the best part is that like, it, it triggers when you cast it. <laughs> you don't have to wait for them to draw cards. Right, like it enters the battlefield, you get a 1-1, one, one, this 1-1, one, one, and it deals a damage to something. Which is like significantly better than like raise the alarm. Which just makes 2-2s, two or 2-1-1s. One, this also shoots something, it triggers, our, like it's just, I mean like if you compare this to any of the, any of the 2 mana spells that make 2-1-1s. One, this is just so far and away better, it's like shocking to me. And yeah, I saw this card when it was like 20 bucks. And I was like, oh, cool. 
it'll probably go down. This was like the Thursday before the set was released. So I figured over the weekend, a bunch of packs and cards are going to get opened and released and people are going to be selling a bunch more and it's going to go down. And then it went up $10 <laughs> and then it kept going up a little more and it's, it's close to about 40 now, but I ended up picking up the ones I needed for about 30. So I bought them lower than what they are currently, but higher than what I could have bought them at. So I, I'd say I basically paid the average, which is frustrating, but you know, what are you going to do? That's life. Sometimes you get good deals. Sometimes you don't get good deals. And what we got here? So the packages I get usually alternate between two different things. Sometimes they're like one to three pricier cards. And some are like 10 to 30 cheaper cards, like commons, uncommons, tokens, things like that. How am I, this is, this is getting, it's in a bag and it's folded and taped and we're having a rough time here. We're having a rough go. I hope this crinkling isn't too bad, but I also hope it's ASMR for you guys and you guys are enjoying it. This looks like it's going to be one of the, the higher quantity, but lower quality, right? Oh, how convenient. We got a smog token. Six, six flying haste. When this creature dies, create 14 treasure tokens. I'm kind of a stickler for tokens. Whenever I play, I want to have the exact tokens my things create. I'm a very visual person. I mentioned this in my cube video as well. Um, I will do whatever I can to get exact tokens of things that I create and represent them on the battlefield. Like nothing is more frustrating to me than seeing tokens like this. Here's a, here's a token. Here's a token. Here's a token. Oh, these are, these are my tokens. This is a soldier. This is a warrior. This is a spirit. Okay. I'm going to attack. Okay. Which ones are attacking these two? I guess. Are they tapped? Okay. Now the, the combat's over. Which one's attacked? Nobody knows. <laughs> it's just, I'm a very visual person and I like not having, I like to minimize the amount of information I have to just remember on a board. So like if I can just have a smog, okay, cool. Now it's attacking. You know, it's attacking. Now it's untapped. Everybody knows. The other cards are four field of ruin from the commander, the commander precons, which are super cool. And like, I'm actually shocked at how many reprints the Lord of the Rings commander precons have. Like there's this, there's ghost quarter, there's growth spiral. Like I keep finding cards uh, in deck lists. And when I go to the art, it's a Lord of the Rings pre -con like commander art. And I'm like, I didn't even know this was reprinted. There's such a, there's like a ton of them. So I got four field of ruins and then I got four chapel, chaplain of arms, alms, chaplain of alms. We'll get it right. This is just a card I saw seeing play in some pioneer decks. So I figured I'd pick it up. It's a one, one first strike ward one with disturb four. So a lot of things going on. And then when it, dis when it's disturbed, it is a two, one with flying and first strike. Each creature you control has ward one. And if this is just put no gravity exile, the typical disturbed text, but I mean, those just seem cool. So I picked them up. I saw them seeing play and I was like, yeah, those are probably like a nickel each. Smog token is trying to stick around here. And this is the last package for today. I think this is also a very sad story. Um, so I saw this card, if this is what I think it is. It's not. Never mind. eBay has this, this habit of telling you that something was delivered. And then it's not delivered. It, like, gets delivered the next day. So, anyway. It's not really that sad, actually. It's kind of good. <laughs> so, we're okay with it. It's another... It's another Orcish Bowmaster. So nothing new, but just another fine gentleman. One of these is definitely going to make its way into the cube, of course. And this art is so good. Like, this is a card that, like, I will definitely get in Borderless because it's just super cool art. Let's see if I can make a better thumbnail. Next. This should work. We'll see if we can make any of those work. But yeah, so that was the mail day. Those are all the packages I received, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you'd like more. 
insights into my my mail <laughs> and my packages and my the cards that I order. And then we can talk about them. And I think this is a good vehicle to do that. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to follow and subscribe. I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks so much.